I'm on Visual Studio Code, wrote a small program, and I would like to use the debugger. Let's see what issues you might run into. I wrote a C++ program, a double A, an in B, and print the variables out. The make file sets the compiler, the standard to C++11 and warnings all. So click on this button, compile and run. And you can see the two variables coming back. To debug, go to the activity bar, run. And the first time you click on this, you need to set it up. So I'll run and debug, GDB, default. And what we need to set is the program. For us, it's always going to be my app. Save. And then over here, launch. So we did see some buttons appear, but nothing else. So in the debug console, we saw that it runs, but it did not stop. So for a debugger, we need to set a point where the debugging stops. And then at that point, you can inspect the variables. You do that by setting what's called a breakpoint. I click here, this is the breakpoint. The debugger is supposed to stop here. You can inspect these two variables. And from this point on, step forward in the code. So let's try it again. Launch. And we get the same thing. So what you need to set is in the make file, the minus G option. And that sets debug information in the executable. Otherwise, it will not work. I also recommend to switch the optimization off. Save and try again. You will get the same thing. So what you need to do after a change in the make file, compile from scratch. So do a make clean and make sure all the files are compiled with the minus G option. Now, when we run, it should work. It stops at the breakpoint and we can inspect these two variables. Stop the debugger and I'm going to set the variables to negative, save and launch again. You can see we get the old values. So I hope the trend is clear. What we would like to do is before you debug, do and make and make sure you have the current executable and that you not accidentally debug the old one. So we can do that by going to your project and we had the launch.json. So what we would like to do before running this, do and make. And for that, we have the pre-launch task. Let's give it a name. We can choose any name that we want. I'm calling it build. And this task now needs to be set up. But this task is going to be launched before the debugger runs. Go to terminal, configure tasks. Create task.json file from template, other, and then we have the template and the label. The label, this has to be the build, so the same string as we used in the task.json. It's going to be of the type shell, and here's the command that we can run. So what we would like to do is to the make minus f make file. So you can view this as a build command. In the terminal, there is a run build task. You will see that this is an option, but it's not selected by default yet. So we can make that case by doing group and then select this option. So set the kind to build and the default to true. So now, once you go over here, run build task, we will see that this task is run. So these are the steps of the make. What we also saw is that we were in the CSH, but once you run this build task, it switches to the task build. If you don't want that, then you can set the presentation mode and set reveal to silent. Let's go back to the CSH shell and now run the build. We can see it over here that it does the build, but it does not switch to the task build. We set up this task, that is the pre-launch task, so this will be run every time before you do the debug. Let's go back to the main, change this to zero, and see if now it works.
it stops and we have the latest executable. So setting up this pre-launch task is a good automation and will avoid that you accidentally execute the old executable instead of the new one. Let's go over here. These two JSON files are stored in .vs code inside your project. So for every project you need to set this up or copy them from another project that you have. Lastly, if you do a modification on the make file, remember that you need to do a make clean and a make and recompile all the files that you have. 